Good evening, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this evening's evening prayer. Uh, Tuesday, the, the, the 4th of April. And hopefully this evening won't be like last night, where they, it took hours to upload. Uh, not sure what happened there, but I'm doing the same thing this evening again. I'm going, I'm recording it just before six o'clock, and then I'm going to go off to the uh, service of meditation tonight at St. Mark's, and hopefully by the time I get back, it will have been uploaded. Last night when I got back, it wasn't uploaded, and it wasn't uploaded for hours until some nearly midnight last night. Hopefully we don't have that problem tonight, all being well. Let's pray as we come to the end of another day and uh, sometimes maybe it's good to do it just before we go to bed even though i'm recording it earlier because it might be that's the last thing we do in terms of prayer before we sleep let's pray oh god make speed to save us oh lord make haste to help us let your ways be known upon earth, your saving power among the nations. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. As we behold your Son enthroned on the cross, stir up in us the fire of your love that we may be cleansed from all our sins and walk with you in newness of life, singing the praise of him who died for us and our salvation. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Christ Jesus came, was in the form of God, but he did not cling to equality with God. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in our human likeness. Being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. At the name of Jesus, Every knee shall bow. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Christ committed no sin. No guile was found on his lips. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. By his wounds, you have been healed. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. God's love for us is revealed in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. 
he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. God's love for us is revealed in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And our psalm this evening is Psalm 55, from verse 13 to 24. Psalm 55 from verse 13 to 24. Cast your burden upon the Lord and he will sustain you. For it was not an open enemy that reviled me, for then I could have borne it. Nor was it my adversary that puffed himself up against me, for then I would have hid myself from him. But it was even you, one like myself, my companion and my own familiar friend. We took sweet counsel together, and we walked with the multitude in the house of God. Let death come suddenly upon them. Let them go down alive to the pit, for wickedness inhabits their dwellings, their very hearts. As for me, I will call upon God and he will deliver me. In the evening and morning and at noonday, I will pray and make my supplication and he shall hear my voice. He shall redeem my soul in peace from the battle waged against me, for many have come upon me. God, who is enthroned of old, will hear and bring them down. They will not repent, for they have no fear of God. My companion stretched out his hands against his friends, his friend and, his, and has broken his covenant. His speech was softer than butter. A war was in his heart. His words were smoother than oil, yet are they naked souls. Cast your burden upon the Lord and he will sustain you and will not let the righteous fall forever. Cast your burden upon the Lord and he will sustain you. And our prayer, Lord, in times of fear and dread, grant that we may so cast our burdens upon you that you may bear us on the holy wings of the Spirit to the stronghold of your peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This, um, this psalm is a psalm talking about the betrayal of a friend. And it is, it's looking forward to, to Judas's betrayal of our Lord. Um, it was for it was an it it was not an open enemy that reviled me. It was you, my companion and my own familiar friend. It's that sense of being betrayed by someone you love, someone who's close by you, someone who's who who is your close friend. You know, um, the, the same keep your enemies close keep your friends close and your enemies closer well here is a friend someone who share a meal with our lord and yet he was the one 
to betray him and sell him out, as it were, to his enemies. And uh, sisters and brothers, I don't know if you have anything like that in your life, but it's, it's, it, it is a reminder to us, really, that um, our great trust is not in, in people around us. Our trust is in God because even the closest ones, the nearest us, can let us down and um and be our be our enemies even when in fact they are our our closest friends and so the psalmist is calling us to cast our burden upon the lord not upon anybody else <laughs> upon the lord and he will sustain you uh, he's the one who will look after us uh, not not uh, the ones and the nearest and, and of course we we need to have people who we can trust but only to so so much and to so far as it were because uh, even even friends let us down at times and family as well not just friends but family as well and so the psalmist is reminding us that close friends and family can betray us just like judas betrayed our lord all right, let's uh, let's let's say our collect for this evening. A special prayer, Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards a human race sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon Him our flesh, and to suffer death upon the cross, grant that we may follow the example of His patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So our, our, our first reading this evening is in Lament, Lamentations. We are, we are continuing our look at Lamentations. This evening we are in chapter 3. We started chapter 3 this morning. And we'll be reading some more of chapter 3 tonight. Lamentations, five chapters of lament. It's lamentations is a reminder to us that when we suffer, when we go through troubles, when we go through trials, we are to bring, bring our troubles and our sorrows to God. In lament, crying out to God. For help, a lament, a, a lament, sisters and brothers, is a, is 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 bearing our souls to God, and say, Lord, I need your help. And uh, this was, of course, at the destruction of Jerusalem when Jeremiah lamented, cried out to God. Oh, it was God's judgment upon the people, but that was, that, it, that that didn't make the pain any less severe. In fact, probably made it worse. In fact, that God was punishing His own people for their for their sins, and 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 so so Jeremiah cried, cried out to God. And sometimes, sisters and brothers, we need to do the same because it is in our lament that we are going to find hope and peace. All right, so chapter 3 of Lamentations from verse 40 to 51. <clears throat> the chapter 3 is like the climax of the book, even though there are five chapters. Chapter 3 is the is the is the is the central chapter. It's kind of it's like the the, the, the pinnacle of the text of the of the book. Uh, and then it goes down, it sort of go up and then down in terms of its um, its literary style. So chapter 3 from verse 40 to 51. Let us examine our ways and test them, and let us return to the Lord. Let us lift up our hearts and our hands to God in heaven and say, We have sinned and rebelled, 
and you have not forgiven. You have covered yourself with anger and pursued us. You have slain without pity. You have covered yourself with a cloud so that no prayer can get through. You have made us scum and refuse among the nations. All our enemies have opened their mouths wide against us. We have suffered terror and pitfalls, ruin and destruction. Streams of tears flow from our eyes because my people are destroyed. My eyes will flow unceasingly without relief until the Lord looks down from heaven and sees. What I see brings grief to my soul because of all the women of my city. That's, that's it. We finished there. Uh, there is more, but that's where we stop tonight. Verse 51. It, you, you, you feel the anguish. You hear the pain in Jeremiah's voice as he laments over the destruction, the ruin that Jerusalem has become. He says, well, you know, my eyes will flow unceasingly without relief. He's crying. Tears are flowing from his eyes until the Lord looks down from heaven and sees what I see brings grief to my soul because of all the women of my city. And of course, the women themselves, the, the most vulnerable, uh, uh, women and children, they are the most vulnerable in, in, the, in the situation. And they are perishing. They are suffering as a result of God's judgment. It is not pretty. And therefore, the crying out to God for mercy is appropriate. When, of course, we, we must do that all the time, lamenting and crying out to God for help. All right, let's move to our New Testament reading, which is Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. From verse 11 to the end. Galatians 6, 11 to the end. Galatians 6, 11. See what large letters I use as I write to you with my own hand. Those who want to impress people by means of the flesh are trying to compel you to be circumcised. The only reason they do this is to avoid being persecuted for the cross of Christ. Not even those who are circumcised keep the law. Yet they want you to be circumcised that they may boast about your circumcision in the flesh. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is the new creation. Peace and mercy to all who follow this rule, to the Israel of God. From now on, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear in my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. Just, just. <clears throat> All right, so this is the last chapter in Ephesians, I mean, in Galatians. And Paul, this, this, this letter of Galatians, Paul is defending the gospel of Christ against people who are who are seeking to dilute the gospel or mix the gospel with, 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 with works, frankly, with, with the Old Testament regulations and rules, with laws, with Sabbath keeping, with circumcision, and those sorts of things. And Paul is making the point throughout this letter that 
that there is, you, there is nothing else that's needed except faith in Jesus Christ, faith in the cross, faith in what Jesus Christ has done for us. We do not need to be circumcised. We do not need to keep the law and the prophets and all of that. Those are valuable things in themselves, but they have nothing to do with our salvation and, and what Christ has come to do. And so here at the very end, he says, he said, those who want to impress people by means of the flesh are trying to compel you to be circumcised. In other words, they are, they are using you as a means to, to boast about themselves. They want to use you, your circumcision, as, as a way to show to others um, something that they have done something good that they have done, and so on. In other words, they, 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 are, they, they want to boast that they have convinced Gentile people to, be, to become Jews, to become, uh, because that's what circumcision is, you become Jew. The whole issue is, in order, to, does someone have to become a Jew before they can become a Christian? Or do they need to become both Jewish and Christian at the same time? Um, accept the, the Jewish... The, the, the Jewish legal code, the, the Jewish rules and regulations, and, and at the same time accept Jesus Christ. Because if you remember, the early Christians were all Jews, including Paul and Jesus. So, 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 so should we become Jewish and Christian? And the way you become both is that you accept Christ, yes, but you also need to be circumcised. You also need to keep the laws of Moses and the sacrificial system and all of these things. And Paul is adamant that you do not need to become Jewish in order to become Christian. And those things are of no value at all, eternal value. It may be valuable for for your you know for, for for something for you that you want to do, but they have no eternal value upon your soul. And so Paul says, these people they want to circumcise you. They want to they 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 they, they want to uh, um, engage you in religious in in the in the Old Testament religion, in the religion of old that it, Christ has come to fulfill. And so he says that. Is not acceptable, but he's the point here. The main crucial point is verse 24. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul says they want to boast in circumcision, they want to boast in the in the regulations of the law and the and the Jewish markers and the things. And, 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 they, and their own religion and their own religiosity and so forth. That's what they want to boast in. But he says, may I never boast except in one thing. My boast should only be in the cross of Jesus Christ. What Jesus Christ has done for me should be my only boast. The only thing I glory in. The only thing I need to be, I need, I, I need to show in my life. Of what Jesus Christ has done for me on that cross. So the cross of Christ is, is the thing that I lift up. The cross of Christ is the thing that I exalt. I boast about. I glory in this. I exalt this cross. And that's the, and that's the only thing Paul says I will boast about. And he says, um, through which the world has been crucified to me. And I to the world. And he says, frankly, the cross means that I'm dead to the world. And the world is dead to me. The world, that is the standards of the world, the, the values of the world, the systems of the world, the way the world organizes itself. Paul says, as far as the world is concerned, I am dead because of the cross of Jesus Christ. I am crucified to the world, and the world is crucified to me. All I care about is that cross. All, I'm, all that matters to me is the cross, nothing else. The world is dead to me. The values, the standards, this, the, the, the things of this world, the things that people run after, the things that people desire, the things that people want, that is dead to me. He says, I am crucified to that and that is crucified to me. All, all that matters, all that matters 
is the cross of Jesus Christ. So verse 15, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is the new creation. What matters is the new life that Jesus brings through the cross. That's what matters. Nothing else matters. Nothing else is of significance. Nothing else is of eternal value. Only what Jesus Christ has done for us. The new and living way in which he has opened up for us. This new creation, this new life that he has, he has uh, uh, procured for us at the cross. That's why the cross is of paramount importance for St. Paul and should be for us as well, sisters and brothers. So may we lift up that cross this week in our lives as we draw nearer to Good Friday and to Easter. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the cross. We thank you, Lord, for the for the for, for Jesus who who willingly, sacrificially died on that cross for us. We thank you, Lord, for his death, because in his death we have life. And so, Lord, while it was a good Friday, it is a good Friday for us, it was not a good Friday for you. It was on that day that you died. You bear the shame, the disgrace, the agony of suffering and death, all for us. Not because you have any, any you had any sin of your own, you, 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 Lord Jesus, were the most innocent of person to have ever been killed. There's never been another innocent person in the universe who has ever died. And yet, Lord, you willingly gave your life on the cross for us. May we, may we never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world is crucified to us and, our, and we to the world. Lord, give us grace to be dead to the world, the standards of the world, comparing to knowing this cross, to loving the cross, to adoring the cross, to worshiping the cross on which you died. Because, Lord, without that cross, we are lost. Thank you, Lord, for the cross in which we boast, in which we glory. And may, may it alone be our boast and our glory. Because we have nothing else to glory in. Nothing in my hand I bring Simply to thy cross I cling. Naked come to thee for dress. Helpless look to thee for grace. Foul I to thy fountain fly. Wash me, Savior, or I die. Lord, only you can save us. Save us, O oh Lord. By the power of your cross. Save our world by the power of your cross. Save, Lord, bless, save, heal, restore, mend brokenness, broken lives, broken bodies, broken minds by the power of your cross. So, Lord, lift your cross high, we pray, so that those who look to the cross by faith will find healing and strength and salvation for their souls. We'll find Jesus. Lord, as we lift up the cross this week, as we proclaim him, as we proclaim you, as the crucified Lord and Savior, may those who see and hear 
May they see Jesus. May they see him hanging on the cross. May they hear the gospel message. Give them eyes to see and ears to hear so that they will receive and they will worship. And they will find the power of the cross penetrating their lives, transforming their hearts, their souls, their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, Lord, for those we have been praying for in our own community. We pray for the power of your cross to bring healing, bring, bring hope, bring strength, physical strength, emotional strength, spiritual strength to those who are weak in mind and body. We pray for those on our prayer list. We pray for Veronica and Chester. We pray for Dolly and Desmond, Jean and uh, uh, Jean Murphy, Joanna, Hannah Todd, Pat, Pauline, <coughs> Daphne, Muriel, David, Maxine, Surya Kala, Thelma in hospital, Veronica recovering from surgery, Monica undergoing um, cancer treatment, and her daughter, uh, Cheryl, Una, Charity, Pippa also going, undergoing treatment for cancer, Shireen Ray in ICU. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray also for those who are, who are, who who's, are, who needs comfort, for 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 their deceased family member. Uh, Lord, we we pray for the family of Auntie Janie as they plan her farewell service in the coming week. We pray for Grace and the, her family as they mourn the passing of her brother. We pray for Veronica and Chester as they also mourn the passing of their son. Pauline's mom, Daphne, as she and that family mourns the passing of her sister. And so, Lord, we bring these to you and many others in our hearts. We pray for them. Pray for Melissa over there in, in South Korea that you will be with her and strengthen her and protect her from disease, from harm. We pray that you'll watch over our dear sister. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Muslims who are fasting during the month of Ramadan, that Lord Jesus Christ, you may, you may re reveal yourself to them that they, the scales will fall from their eyes and they will see you, the resurrected Lord and Savior, that they will worship you. Worship you like Thomas, my, say my Lord and my God. And their hearts will be changed, their lives will be transformed and the cross of Christ will become central for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> and then in the night prayer before we before we finish this evening <clears throat> come my light and illumine my darkness come my life and re revive me from death come my physician and heal my wounds come flame of divine love and burn up the thorns of my sins Kindle in my heart with the flame of your love. Come, my King, sit upon the throne of my heart and reign there, for you alone are my King and my Lord. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord watch over you and protect you. May the Lord grant you grace, grant you peace and rest tonight, sisters and brothers. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night, sisters and brothers.